Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about this connection between work and energy. Uh, more specifically, yes, it does apply to essentially potential energy also, but the connection is made more with kinetic energy. Okay, um, so the net amount of work of an object or done on an object equals, oops, sorry, panning, not panning, right? So done on an object is going to be equal that object's change in kinetic energy. Okay. Um, and so I, I kind of want to highlight the word change, right? Because sometimes what they'll do is they'll give you a multiple choice question and say, what does work equal? And two of the options will be kinetic energy and change in kinetic energy. The answer is change in kinetic energy, right? Well, this because of what happens is students, by, um, when you look at the equation, if your initial velocity is zero, then you have no initial kinetic energy so that your um, work would equal your final kinetic energy, but technically that is a change in kinetic energy because we've taken care of the initial by setting it equal to zero, all right? And so this is known as the work energy theorem, all right? So the statement of the net amount of work done on an object is equal, so I forget the S, that object's changing kinetic energy. So mathematically, what does that look like? Work done equals change in kinetic energy. Now, we can expand this to do, all right, work, the formula for work is F, and we're using delta X, I apologize for that. Um, so it's F delta X equals one half mass. Now, I like to write it, the, the um, let's, let's write it out this way first. So it's one half mass, V squared minus one half mass times initial velocity squared. Okay. You could also write the, the kinetic energy part to look like this, which actually helps with the solving if you have to look for a final velocity or initial velocity. But sometimes what happens is students will kind of um, do something weird here. Okay. Remember, V squared minus VO squared does not equal V minus VO squared, okay? And that's, you know, if you, I can show you the mathematical proof, but I'm sure your math teachers have done that um, enough. Um, the way to think about it is if you just use numbers, right? So if I use like two, right? So two squared, and I'll call this one squared, right? Um, that could be a problem because it's going to be... Um, So if we did, let's say, 3 squared minus 2 squared, all right, does that equal 3 minus 2 squared? Well, this is 9, this is 4, so 9 minus 4 is 5. Over here, you got 3 minus 2, that's 1, 1 squared is 1. So 5 does not equal 1. So there's your mathematical proof, right? Um, now, let's redefine work in terms of energy. So there is a second definition of work. Is just that work is the process by which a force transfers energy into or out of a system, okay? And so we've talked about how work can be positive, negative, or zero, and now we're going to address how does that affect the energy. So when you have positive work done on a system, that means energy is being transferred into a system, right? So your kinetic energy would increase, okay? Um, if there's negative work done on a system, that means you're removing energy, and so it's being transferred out of a system. And that means your, uh, your kinetic energy would decrease. And now when there's zero work or no work right, done, there's no transfer of energy. Okay, So nothing goes in or out. And remember that each force... All right, that performs work is the means by which energy transfer takes place. So if work, if friction does work, it's removing energy from the system. If an applied force does work, it's adding energy to the system. Now, conceptually, the work energy theorem makes sense. 
right? So if the speed is constant, that means your delta V is equal to zero, which I'm going to add in a couple minutes, which means your delta K is equal to zero, which means your work is equal to zero, right? Because if we look at the equation, if I do uh, FD equals one half MV squared minus VO squared, well, V equals VO, right? They, that just becomes zero, which means FD would equal zero, right? So, which means you have no transfer of work, okay, or transfer of energy, all right? So, here are a couple of examples on how this works, right? I know it's kind of weird. You keep saying, I keep saying the word work, 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 right? But here are a couple of examples using this work energy theorem. So, here we have a car of mass, 2,000 kilograms, speeds up from 10 to 20 meters per second. What network is done in the car to increase its speed? And then the second part of the question, what network is done to accelerate the car from 20 to 30 meters per second? So this is actually a little bit of a trap because if you notice, they're both a 10, right? The change in velocity is 10 meters per second for both of them. But you do have to be careful. You can't just say this is going to be equal because you remember in the equation, right? And so we would say delta, or sorry, not delta, W, the, just W. Right, so W equals one half mass times V squared minus V O squared. So remember, inside the parentheses, not delta V squared, it's V squared minus V O squared. So you have to plug in the individual velocities or speeds at the at that moment. So we do one half times two thousand times. Okay, so the first question would be twenty squared minus hundred squared. Okay, and we're going to get a, a, the amount of work done in this situation is 3 times 10 to the 5th joules. Okay, and now you'll see for the second one, we're going to use the same equation. So 1 half mass times V squared minus V O squared. Okay, and we're gonna, now we're going to plug in, instead of 20 and 10, we're going to plug in 30 and 20. What you'll see is that, right, the 30 squared is 900, right, 20 squared is 400. Over here, you got 400 and 100, right? The difference on, on the, in the first situation is 300 inside parentheses. Here, it's 500 inside parentheses. So you can easily see that the energy is going to be different when you, uh, or the transfer energy is going to be different. The amount of work is going to be different, and it's going to be 5 times 10 to the fifth joules, okay? So the, I put this question in here because a lot of students will automatically go back to it is a change in velocity of 10 meters per second. So those two numbers have to be equal, okay? And as you can see, it does not work out to be equal because remember, the kinetic energy part has squared in it, okay? All right, the next one says, a boy does 19 joules of work as he pulls a 6.4 kilogram sled through a distance of two meters. No other work is done on the sled, right? So that means there's no friction or anything like that. If the initial speed of the sled is 0.5 meters per second, what is its final speed? Okay, so this one's going to take, you know, we're doing a little, a little bit of algebra here. So we got work done, one half mass times V squared minus VO squared, right? So they give us the initial velocity of 0.5. Here's our work, right? Here's our mass, the 6.4 kilograms, and the distance we're going to do it in is 2 meters. Now, sometimes you do need that two meters, but I'll tell you this, you don't need it because they don't tell you how much force you apply. Um, so all we're going to do is, is solve this equation, the work energy theorem, for final velocity. And so it's, it's, a li it's not tricky, but if I write the equation to look like I have on the board here, one half m times v squared minus v o squared, the solving actually becomes easier because the first thing you're going to do is multiply by a half, right? And so that's going to be, I have a 2w, and I'm going to divide by mass. So I have a 2w over m. Now that leaves just what's inside the parentheses, and so all I have to do is add a vo squared over, all right? And then I just tackle the square root by taking the square, or the square by taking the square root of both sides. So right there, that is the equation for the final velocity, right, with the work energy theorem. Okay, so now I'll just plug in numbers. So we say 0.5 squared plus 2 times 19 joules of work divided by 6.4 is our mass, 
Okay, and we find that the final velocity is kind of, I have it written down kind of strange here. I'm just going to confirm my answer. Um, so it would be 0.5 squared plus 2 times 19 divided by 6.4. Take the square root of that. Okay. Like I guess I didn't write the decimal point. So the final velocity in this situation would be 2.5 meters per second. Okay. And so you can see that once you do work on a system, you do increase the velocity or the speed of that object. Okay, so just to talk about what we're going to do coming up, we're going to talk about potential energy, and then we're going to talk about conservation of energy. And then the final object or the final um, topic in this unit will be power.